Somehow the rules do not apply to you. So this episode, I gotta tell you, I feel incredibly lucky. I got to talk to the amazing Alex Gab. Now this is a person who makes beautiful work, is a teacher, and inspires others with their creativity. I got to talk to them a little bit about what their inspirations are, what their path to creativity are, and why they want to inspire and share. So I hope you like this episode of Who's Art It? Stay tuned and you'll get to see all about it. Well, hello and welcome to Who's Art It? Yeah, or welcome back. Maybe you're going through our YouTube page and looking at all the amazing content we have. If not, I have got a thrilling introduction for you today. This is the fantastically talented, kind, and incredibly versatile Alex Gab! <laughs> <laughs> the crowd went wild. <laughs> uh, welcome to Who's Art It? Oh, thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Wow. So, we are uh, recording this in the back of our Bristol studio. Are you from Bristol or? Originally, no, I'm from London, um, and then uh, after my schooling, I moved down to the West Country, uh, where I stayed in Bath for um, a few years, and then did my uh, university over at the uh, the Bristol UWE. Okay. So then I kind of just moved um, over to Bristol, which wasn't far from Bath, obviously, um, but stayed. Did you study art? In I did study Ooh, art at uni, at UWE as well. Yeah, at UWE, yeah, I did. Um, I started off. I did a foundation course, um, which was obviously a year. Um, loved it so much. Uh, stayed on, and um, I did actually start off doing graphics. Okay. Um, and I did that for another year, and but unfortunately, it wasn't for me. Right. Um, and at that time, many moons ago, you were allowed to swap courses if you talk to the tutors nicely. <laughs> I can't imagine you talking nicely about swapping <laughs> courses over, I mean. And uh, they said, yes, 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 um, we can swap you over, but you obviously have to, you know, start the following the following year. So I did the three years in fine art okay. after that, yeah. So and when you were in uni, uh, so how long ago was that? Oh my God. This well, you don't have to tell me honestly, just give me a moons. rough answer. So, <laughs> So what, I, what I'm curious about with that is how has your art practice changed? I mean, do, when you look back at the stuff you were making in uni, yeah. do you kind of go, oh, or do you go, oh, that was all right. Like, I'm curious about your own self-reflectivity yeah. with your earlier generations of paintings. Okay. I would say it was, it was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I think the best thing out of my three years that I studied there um, was actually probably the foundation course which really helped me to go forward into fine art. If I'm looking back on my work, um, I actually got a message from um, a person off Facebook who said that he has... I, I put some work in um, as solicitors when I was at the, um, UN, at the UE um, and um, basically a person bought it it stayed in Bristol, travelled to London, came back to Bristol. This is through law firms, so yeah. it's been moved from one place to another. And um, basically, um, this person said that I've just purchased your picture, which I would say is probably about 25 years old. And he put it up on Facebook for me to have a look. Oh, nice. Um, and it looked exactly the same how I painted it. It was incredible. Yeah. So it was a real journey. Yeah, I mean, so. that, I think that's one of the interesting things about making art objects is once they've left your hands, they have a life of their own. They have a Absolutely. existence of their own. They have their own relationships with people along the way. Yeah. And it's when that kind of comes back to you later, it, it can be very exciting. Yeah, I, I was really thrilled actually. He, I mean, he didn't have to do this for me and he did and it was lovely to see. And I said, had you, you know, had it cleaned or anything? And he said, no. And I went, oh my goodness, it looks spotless yeah. and, and vibrant how I painted it. So uh, I was really well, pleased. Uh, well, 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 if you want to see some of Alex's work, we'll have links in the menu uh, and in the text below. Uh, we'll put some links up somewhere. 
on the screen, probably. Maybe. It might not be there. I'm not that good on the YouTube stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best, I promise. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, doing your best, so you have recently taken the leap into... Whoa. Oh, yes, yes. Um... So, would you like to tell the folks at home um, well, I've always obviously dabbled in the arts, so I've always done a bit of painting. When I when I finished UWE, um, I did some exhibitions with my dad. Okay. My dad's an artist as well, oh, so gosh. that was really nice, a good collaboration of, of, of working together. Um, and, and then, actually, I got into music, so I also play bass guitar for a band, so do you have one stuff. here? We could jam together. I play guitar, you know. Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. That's off camera. Or, you know, yeah, that's off camera. Yeah, yeah. We'll go past that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, so I carried on doing that. And then I got into um, teaching. So I, yeah. I actually got into working with people with learning disabilities and yeah. mental health. Um, so I decided that this actually was actually really really good for me and I really wanted to do something for people so I got into the teaching aspect of that and that was just like for private lessons yeah um, and I worked for um, a couple of companies um, but obviously a couple of years back obviously COVID struck yeah. um, and then obviously I went back into more of the supporting role so a lot of the art classes and and uh, individual one-to-one -one classes, they all shut down. Yeah. So unfortunately, I couldn't go back into doing that. But I stayed in in the system um, of working with people with LD and mental health, but on more of a supporting level. Yeah, well, uh, there's a few people. I mean, it's it, there. There are clear crossovers, but I won't get into it too much between kind of mental health and art and the people who get into creativity and you know. I, don't, I won't get into it too much, but no. there's definitely some tie-ins there that we'll talk about maybe at some other time. Yeah, yeah. I think me and Jacob are going to talk about it on one of the podcasts as well, um, even more explicitly. But um, so what? One of the things we talked a little bit about before before the show today was, um, you know, we just had a podcast about balance, and I think one of the one of the core balancing acts that artists have to walk is the tightrope between being a successful business or or you know making ends meet and kind of just going towards creativity for creativity's sake okay. now have you found that um since you've shifted to full-time that's that dynamic has changed or have you found that it's easier or harder or have you always kind of just did you already have a plan for it when you went into it what's your experience been like um well i journey? kind of after obviously this the supporting role that i did i decided that i really wanted to get back into doing obviously my art full-time um, only because over the obviously when we were all at home for the last couple of last few years um, I did sell quite a bit of work so I thought oh there's interest out there for my for my particular work so that was really good um, yes it's a difficult one for me because I'm very much a hands-on creative let's paint not the business side so but obviously everyone has to do that to try and sell your work so obviously being online selling stuff through websites and things like that yes i do have to do that the balance of it is i really have to motivate myself to do it mm. i find it quite a struggle because my brain is let's just concentrate on the painting but mm. then I, if you can't get your painting out there to see you know for people to see you need to advertise it or publicize it or do a show or etc etc so the balance yeah up and down for me I yeah. th I'd say yeah it's it sometimes it is a struggle yeah. um because I'm not really that sort of tech savvy either yeah. so yeah it's um it's a difficult one but I do have some future sort of aims and goals and without it getting too bogged down in my brain that's all i've got to aim for well i'm happy that we can help you <laughs> help you with some of that yes sharing this side. is this is this is brilliant publicity and i thank you very much well, no no i mean it's honestly you know similar to some of the things you've said i i get a kick personally out of helping people get their voice out there yeah so for me it's that's what i that's you know that's the that's the thing that puts me in a position that I like to be in okay. which is helping people yeah. who have 
talent but struggle sometimes to get their voice out yeah find a kind of platform to share their work with Fab. so yeah, I mean, yeah it's like <laughs> yeah it's, I'm, I'm fine with this um so you did mention um your work a bit um um you know some of the things we were talking about are more about you but i just i mean i am curious kind of I've seen your work. It's colorful. It's bold. It's it's uh, vibrant. It's got lots of movement and dynamism to it. But I, I I do wonder what your inspiration, your creative process is like. I mean, are you somebody who does lots of sketching? Do you let the paint lead? Um, like, what is your process like? And what are the things that inspire you to to think, oh, I'm gonna paint now? Or is it just like you paint all the time? What is that? I don't paint like? all the time. I do have to have moments of space in my head. Otherwise, it just gets too muddled. Mm. Um, I do tend to go to places which aesthetically please me, mm. which means fresh air, beach, sea, and expanse of landscape. So I like to have um, a surrounding of peace, mm. if that's possible. Um, when you find it, it's magical, and I think that's where my inspiration comes from. So do you bring your canvases out with you, or is it something where you t you kind of take it and then you reflect your feelings? Or I mean, how does that process? Feel? Um, no, I tend to take a lot of photography, really. I okay. do like a lot of, lot of photos, um, and I somehow collect a jar of, this sounds really weird, but when I'm in, a, in that space, I collect that feeling in that jar and I keep it with me mm. so as soon as I go back to my studio I try and release that jar and then I paint that's very poetic I suppose it is yeah I'm gonna have to figure out how to get an animation or something of a jar with like colors yeah out. you know when you, <laughs> when you have all your feelings all your like it could be about anything and it's but it's personally for you yeah. it's all collected and somehow I get that from being in that landscape. Oh, fantastic. So yeah. I don't know how it works, but it's it's stored. Oh, well, I look forward to the next time I'm checking out your work, <laughs> seeing, looking for that. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting thing to hear how people come about creativity from the different paths and the different inspirations. Mm. And, you know, it's something that I'm quite interested in. Um, so you are still teaching, I understand. I am still teaching, and, yes. And I believe, if should all things go to plan, that this will be released and you've got something coming up uh, quite soon, don't yeah, you? Yeah, um, so a week today, um, so that's on the 27th, I'm at um, Chepstow, which is a, there's a community centre called the Palmer Centre. Okay. Um, and basically, twenty second November two thousand twenty one. Just in case, yeah, twenty seventh. Yeah, 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 just, yeah, just, just, just in case. This, <laughs> I don't know when you're watching this, so just in case you're like, oh, next week. It's like, no, no, no that was. But you can check it all out. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be teaching ongoing as well. So yes, we'll, we'll go into where they can find you, and that'll be on the yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's yeah. Week today on Saturday, um. And basically, um, the lady there, the manager, um, really liked my work. Mm. Predominantly, it's going to be uh, Christmas arts and crafts stalls, basically, in yeah. the main room, in the main hall. Um, but she said, you know, would you like to exhibit some of your artwork? And I'm thinking, yeah, I would like, I'd really like to do that because it's been a long time since I've done that. Yeah. Um, and I just like to get in contact with people. Well, I mean, hopefully, if you want to contact... Alex, where, where, where can people find you if they want to contact you? Is it a website or is it Yeah, is it well, Instagram you can contact primarily? me on my website, which is uh, ajgartworks.co.uk. Yeah. Um, There'll be a link or a flashing Yeah, link. Flash, flashing link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> I, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> I make no <laughs> Um Also, I've got some Facebook pages. I've got about three going up at the moment and Instagram, but it's all related to AJG Artworks. Okay. Um, and, and then you can see, obviously, I'm Alex, so you can you can find me there and just look for the hair. Yeah. And or if you or me. if you want to have a jam session, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the band anyway? Oh, Funkenstein. Oh, Funkenstein's. I was just telling my friends about. Um, I think Erotic City by George Clinton is still uh, yeah. one of the best club hoppers. Yeah. That song, and they, and they were like, "Oh, what's Maggot Brain?" I'm like, "Oh, you uh, don't, you have it. <laughs> it's a whole second side of an album." Because we were talking about songs that were second, the yeah. whole second side of an album. Because there's yeah. only like three, 
really. Yeah. Because it's Pink Floyd dark uh, metal. Yeah. There's there's uh, Maggot Brain. I can't remember. There's one other kind of like, you know, acid induced. Yeah. You know, guitar. Yeah. <laughs> 60s second album. Can't there, remember you know, that. Like, you know, I mean, the whole point is that you don't remember, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, no, we we've been playing for years and years, and uh, um, we do that as well. Obviously, we haven't been playing so much at the moment but we have got gigs coming up as well so we're doing electric and acoustic sets so oh, that's it's nice yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good yeah um so i think do you have anything else you you want to put in there for people up? um just please message me and say hi um i'm doing obviously my own artwork which is released up on my face um, on my website so um, I'll be doing that this weekend, and then obviously um, any other questions you want to answer, you know, answer we'll pass me, them along. Yeah. pass them on, and um, I do commission work as well. So if you need some commissions done, please contact me. Or if you have a law firm and you want to, you know, shift paintings, <laughs> shift from paintings London, from one from, from Bristol to London, and then back to Bristol again, <laughs> and then have a go home with somebody, you can do that as well. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> so. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind that journey again. That was that was a good journey. <laughs> um, maybe in twenty five years somebody's going to contact you. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it won't be Facebook then. I no, no, no. I'm pretty certain about that. Okay. Um, so the fi final three questions. Okay. So, uh, who's your favorite artist? My dad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, that's awesome. He's yeah. he's my best influence, and um, yeah, I continue to really be influenced by him. I won't, I won't go into it too much, but Alice Sims, who's one of our, one of the artists for Keep Artists, she also uh, painted, grew up painting with her dad. And it's it's just I'm like, yeah. I, have, I, have a, I have kids now and they sometimes paint with me and it's just like such a magical thing yeah. to do. So yeah. anyway, that's just getting a little yeah. bit. Anyway, uh, so who's your least favorite artist? I don't have a least favorite Oh, artist. come on. There's oh. somebody whose work you look at and think, oh, I can't believe they made that. Well, there's loads of that stuff, yeah, isn't there? Yeah, give me one. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's too many to mention. <laughs> So you heard it here first, Alex h hates lots of art. I do, <laughs> I hate them all. <laughs> I don't um, like the pretentious types, that's me. Oh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. <laughs> oh, I don't count, okay, okay. You're right, oh, you're I'm right. one of the good ones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you could meet one artist, uh, either alive or dead, who would you want to meet? Wow, that's put me on the spot. Um, Gustav Klimt. Okay. Interesting answer. Why? Why? Uh, stunning colours and form and absolutely amazing artwork. Fantastic. Oh, well, that's been really fun to talk with you. That's all right. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this is Alex Gaff. Uh, I'm Doug. This is Who's Art It? Part of the Keep Art uh, interview series. Um, if you like the stuff we're doing uh, and like the content we're putting out, we would really, 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 really like you to click the subscribe button and watch some more videos and tell your friends and comment and let us know what you think. Thank you so much and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Dougie. Thank you. Cheers. Wow.